I know many of you go back a few years and uh, you might remember some of these things that I'm going to talk about this morning. But I know growing up uh, in a small little Polish parish uh, right near downtown, uh, Corpus Christi was always a special time for us. Uh, at that time, I really go back long, it was celebrated on the Thursday and not on a Sunday, and then it's been moved to Sunday to give it greater solemnity so that we, we really honor uh, the, the body and blood of Christ in a very special way. And it's an example, if you will, of how through the centuries the liturgy uh, took on a devotional aspect, especially the times that we spend before the Blessed Sacrament. In many parishes throughout the diocese, there are parishes that have Eucharistic adoration. But you notice that the scriptures this morning talk about receiving Christ, receiving Christ. And in receiving him, we come forward and we realize that what we receive is truly the body and blood of Christ. And people have died and have been martyred because of, of, of this belief. As the centuries went on and they did not come to communion as often as they should have, what began to be developed is a kind of devotional life that outflowed from the fact of this basic truth of our religion, our faith. And so particularly the Corpus Christi procession uh, would be a procession where uh, after Mass, the Blessed Sacrament was carried either in the church or preferably outside the perimeter of the church and altars were set up and four altars altogether and each one uh, the Blessed Sacrament would be taken there would be some prayers and one of the Gospels from the four evangelists would be proclaimed and after that would come back in the final blessing and benediction uh, of the of Mass. Now for some, uh, it might sound like a quaint custom, but it truly is a, a realization that as we process with the Blessed Sacrament, it's a reminder to us that we continue to walk through life with Christ. The beauty of the sacramental life of the church, beginning with baptism and continuing on with the other sacraments of the church, most especially the Eucharist, when we gather together at the table of the Lord to reenact what Christ did for us, his passion, death, and glorious resurrection. And it's through the power of the Holy Spirit that this is accomplished. And through the words of the priest, the calling down of the Spirit, that these simple elements of bread and wine are turned, transformed into the body and blood of Christ. As many of you are confined to your homes, oftentimes Eucharistic ministers or uh, the priest or deacon of the parish will bring you Holy Communion. And it is a way in which we are also reminded how what we do at church is then given and transported to those who are unable to receive Communion. So it's really a wonderful gift, a, a unique and special gift that Jesus left with us. And I suppose if there's anything to say today is to be deeply, deeply appreciative and thankful to God. Thankful that this has been given to us, this gift which brings us hope, which gives us joy, even in the midst of many of our trials and tribulations. As we celebrate this wonderful feast of the body and blood of Christ today, may we ask Christ in his Eucharist to continue to nourish us, to continue to strengthen us, to bless our families, to heal what needs to be healed in our families and among our friends, to always know that central to it all, that we celebrate Mass as we do this morning, this TV Mass, brings us to the table of the Lord, that we might know him and serve him and love him. God bless you.